Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the second round of the 1958 season, the Monaco Grand Prix. It was held on the 18th of May, it had 31 entries, 16 of them took part in the race with 10 having to retire for various reasons. The race consisted of 100 laps completed in 2 hours 52 minutes and 28 seconds. Tony Brooks took pole with Berra in second, Brabham third, Salvadori fourth and Trintignant fifth. Maurice Trintignant won the Monaco Grand Prix, Musso finished second 20.2 seconds behind, Peter Collins crossed the finish line in third 38.8 seconds after Trintignant, Australian Jack Brabham finished in 4th, he was 3 laps down and rounding off the top 5 was Harry Shell who was 9 laps behind the leader. 1 minute 40.6 was the fastest lap of the race and it was posted by Mike Hawthorne. So here we are once again in Monaco where a lap starts off with a very short sprint into turn 1, a very tight right hand hairpin. We then come into San Devot, a high speed right hander, try not to come in too fast though, unless you want to crash into the railing. We then go uphill and into the casino square, take it easy when coming out of the right hander as there is a very nasty bump right on the corner exit. We then come down into Mirobo, a tight left hander and after a short burst of power, we enter the station hairpin, one of the most iconic corners in Formula 1. Next we have Portier, a tight left hander that brings us onto this slightly curving road that takes us through the tunnel and eventually into the port chicane. You can take this at near full speed but be careful as one small mistake and you might be sleeping with the fish. Finally we come into Tabak, a medium speed left hander that brings us back onto the main straight and that is a lap around the Monaco street circuit. And here we are in qualifying coming around to post the first lap of the session, a 129.8 not a very good lap but hopefully we can come and improve a little bit and we do as we then set a 128.6 I kind of hit the wall there but the car is still intact so we are pretty much good to go and try and beat that time and finally we set a 128 127.8 sorry I tried to improve on this further but Unfortunately, I couldn't. If I would have gone any faster, I would have started hitting walls, so... Yeah, couldn't go any faster. Anyway, here are the previous Monaco Grand Prix winners. Higgs is quite uh, up there. <laughs> he won three of the four uh, Monaco Grand Prix. Anyway, we have Mike Hawthorne on pole, Harry Shell second, Maston Gregory is third, Maurice Intigno 4th with Roy Salvadori rounding off the top 5. Then we have Sterling Moss in 6th, follow, followed by Higgs in 7th, Hill, Phil Hill in 8th, Tony Brooks is 9th, Wolfgang von Trips is 10th, followed by Peter Collins in 11th and Stuart Lewis Evans in 12th. 13th is Luigi Musso followed by Jean Berra in 14th, 15th is Bruce McLaren, Juan Manuel Fangio 16th, 17th Olivier Gendebien, 18th Joe Bonnier, 19th Jack Brabham and last but not least is Graham Hill, our teammate. So once again at the Monaco Grand Prix and should I say it, should I come out and just say it? Uh, I guess I will. It goes just about as well as, uh, well, all the previous Monaco Grand Prix so uh, prepare to see some funny crashes I believe uh, I, I, I I really don't know what I could say about all of this we've seen it three actually four times before because 1950 Monaco Grand Prix went exactly the same so uh, uh, I really don't know what this what else to say anyway here is a replay of the start a pretty decent start although it doesn't won't really matter in the end as we come into this tight hairpin turn one there we lose a couple of positions again it it won't matter in the end because soon people will will start retiring for 
various stupid reasons. As we see there one of the van walls sta stopping right in the middle of the road, because why the bloody hell not? Um, and yeah, so here is our first uh, retirement of the race master and Gregory who comes into the hairpin and kind of clips the edge there and flips his car over. Next we have Sterling Moss who kind of just decides to stop his car in the middle of the road, no idea what happened there. Next we have Luigi Musa coming into San Devot, losing control of his Ferrari, he then gets hit by a feral Ferrari driver and he's upside down. Harry Shell is coming into the casino square now, loses control of his car and crashes into that wall. Fangio flips his car coming into the casino square and he is out of the Grand Prix as well. He, this is followed by Peter Collins losing control of his car coming into the port chicane and he is out. Tony Brooks flies into the bay because why not? Roy Salvadori does pretty much the same thing. Uh, well, not Nice bounce of, the, of that little boat there, that was quite impressive on his part. Zambera is next, he also takes a swim. I guess he wanted to just cool off for a bit. After all, it's quite hot today. Bruce McLaren loses control of his car coming into the port chicane and loses his front. Actually he doesn't lose anything but he still decides to uh, retire. Here are a bunch of cars just pushing him around. His car, his car is quite amazingly intact and then he drives into the hay bales there that limit the, the uh, pit and he's out. This is Gandebian losing control of his yellow Ferrari. Next we have Phil Hill. We now move on to lap 2. So there have there are a few people that actually reached lap 2. That was Phil Hill losing control of his Ferrari through... Um, the, uh, the casino square. This is Joe Bonnier losing control of his car coming into San Devot. He tries to reverse back onto the track but for some reason gets stuck there on the sidewalk. Not entirely sure how and why. We then have Brabham coming into the casino square. Loses control and hits that wall. Maurice Rintignan is next. He does the exact same thing. Then we have Mike Hawthorne coming into Mirabeau. A bit too fast, uh, his car flips over the uh, wall there, down onto this part of the track and then gets stuck on the banisters there. Next we have Graham Hill who loses control of his car through the port chicane and ends up in the bay as well. This is Stuart Lewis Evans on lap 3 coming into and there is Graham Hill <laughs> losing control of his car. And so Evans is out as well. And finally we have Fontris who is coming into Mirabeau, loses control of his Ferrari, flips it over the walls and down onto this section of the track and he's upside down, his car is upside down so he is out of the Monaco Grand Prix as well. As we now move on to lap 5, we are the only ones left in the race so I guess all we can do now is skip to the end of the race and here we are, lap 35 coming around to finish the Monaco Grand Prix, take the win. Um, yeah, we managed to set the fastest lap of the race, not only that, this is actually a lap record by about 2 seconds, I believe, so that's nice. And here are the retirements, pretty much everyone. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. It's kind of a broken rec record thing by now, isn't it? It's The Monaco Grand Prix has ended the same way every single time. With the exception of the first Monaco Grand Prix in 1950 where we had, I think... I believe two people finishing, so um, yeah, that is kind of disappointing, but what can you do, right? Anyway, 
Here are the career statistics and this was Andy's 67th Grand Prix. His best start is from first, has 3 pole positions, has set 13 fastest laps, his best finishes in first, has completed 47 races, 41 of them in the points, has won 26 Grand Prix, 4 at the Indianapolis 500, 4 in Monaco, has 5 championships under his belt, has scored a total of 280 points, has retired 20 times, has experienced 1000 562 out of 1900 laps, has 5 bronze trophies, 5 silver trophies, 26 gold trophies and as an extension 26 podiums. And here is a quick look at the championship standings, Higgs has obviously increased his gap in the lead there, Mastin Gregory the only other person to have points on the board and well as you can see nothing else really that stands out. We have fun trips right down at the bottom. I'm really hoping that next race we'll see more people finishing, that would be quite ideal. <laughs> it's nice to win but it would be nicer if we'd win through challenge and actually racing so uh i've said this a million times i know but that's what racing is about it's not just to be handed over a trophy at the end of each race it's the fight for the trophy anyway moving on here we have the constructor standings lotus are still the only ones to score points we have 16 cooper van wall maserati ferrari and brm are yet to score any points hopefully they will again uh, it would be nice to see some competition. But yeah, our next race is the Dutch Grand Prix. We haven't been here in a while and I'm lo quite looking forward to it. It's a very fun track. I I absolutely enjoy driving around on this. It's, it's kind of sad that it's no longer in use, at least not in Formula 1. I'm not sure if it's uh, actually used in any other uh, racing title. Maybe in... Uh, touring cars, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, that is pretty much it for the video for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's been the same thing as it's always been. Everyone retiring, Andy Higgs being the only one finishing. Uh, I guess we pretty much come to expect this by this point. From here on, I think that the weird part would be if two free people would finish beside Andy. So... <laughs> Maybe that will happen sometime in the future, who knows. Anyway, once again, that is the end of the Monaco Grand Prix, the end of this video. Don't forget to vote for next season's team, link is in the description. I also have a second channel where I will be playing all sorts of different games. At the moment, I'm doing a playthrough of the original Need for Speed Underground. So if you're interested, I will have a link in the description to that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay sharp.